Last week, America lost a hero, and Chicago lost one of its greatest. Cubs Hall of Famer Ernie Banks passed away Friday night. He was known as Mr. Cub. His love for the game of baseball was matched only by his passion for the city of Chicago. He was a Hall of Famer in every sense of the word. He won the hearts of not just Cubs fans, but baseball fans across the nation with his power hitting and Golden Glove performances. And he endeared himself to everyone he ever met with his humble approach to the game of baseball and the game of life. Before Hall of Famer Ernie Banks became Mr. Cub, he was 17 years old playing on a sandlot in Dallas, Texas. That's where Cool Papa Bell, one of the legendary leaders in the Negro Leagues, discovered this young man and signed him to play for the Kansas City Monarchs for $7 a game. While playing for the Monarchs, Ernie Banks was managed by another legend, Buck O'Neill. Playing for the Negro League legend had a profound impact on young Ernie Banks. Buck had so much love for everybody that Ernie decided to model his life after him. It was with the Monarchs that Ernie learned to play with boundless energy and enthusiasm. He learned to express his joy for the game and took to heart the message Buck O'Neill, the manager, would often shout at him, you gotta love this game to play it. Ernie Banks loved it, and it showed. Years later, O'Neill re reunited with Ernie Banks when O'Neill agreed to manage the Cubs in 1962. It was incidentally the first, he was the first African-American manager in Major League Baseball. As one of the first African-American baseball players in the major leagues, Ernie Banks helped to break down the color barriers. The Hall of Fame slugger and two-time MVP made his major league debut at Wrigley Field in 1953, and he became the first African-American to suit up for the Chicago Cubs. He was only 180 pounds. He wasn't the most intimidating batter at the plate, but he had powerful wrist, generating tremendous bat speed. He whipped the bat through the ball, hitting 512 home runs in his career, 2,583 hits, 1,636 RBIs, and a career batting average of 274. From 1955 to 1960, he was the most prolific home run hitter in the game, hitting more home runs than either Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, or Mickey Mantle during those years. In 1958 and 1959, he was named the most valuable player in the National League. He was the first to ever win the award in consecutive years. He was also the first player to have his jersey number retired by the Cubs. And on game days, his number 14 flies proudly over the left field foul pole at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Not surprisingly, Ernie Banks was inducted into Cooperstown the first year he was eligible. But it wasn't the numbers on the back of the baseball card that made Mr. Cub a beloved member of Chicago and the community. It was his passion for the game and the appreciation he showed to everyone he encountered. Over the last several days, I've heard from baseball fans sharing their stories of meeting Mr. Cub. Nearly all were humbled by the opportunity to meet their hero, but even more impressed to find that Ernie was just as appreciative as, of his fans as they were of him. It's an understatement to say the Chicago Cubs had some tough seasons during Ernie's 19-year career. Cubs haven't won a World Series since 1908 or a National League title since 1945. But every day, win or lose, Ernie would lace up his cleats, step on the field, smile for the whole world to see. You couldn't help but love watching him play. And for Ernie Banks, the eternal optimist, he always believed that this was going to be the year for the Cubs. Every spring, he predicted without fail that the Cubs were going to win the pennant. Well, Ernie never got to play in postseason. But his love of the game never wavered despite this. He became famous for his contagiously positive attitude. He often remarked, it's a great day for baseball, let's play too. That was the charm of Mr. Cub. An 11-time All-Star, first ballot Hall of Famer, selected to baseball's all-century team in 1999, it was never about accolades or money for Ernie. He played for the pure joy of the game. After hitting his 500th home run, becoming only the ninth player to achieve that feat, he summed up his feelings by saying, the riches of the game are in the thrills, not in the money. That's an inspiring message. In 2013, I contacted some friends in the White House and asked President Obama to consider a Medal of Freedom for Ernie Banks. I felt that his impressive career with the Cubs and his courage in breaking down the color barrier in baseball were reason enough, but more than these amazing achievements, Ernie's spirit set him apart. It was a special moment to be there at the White House when Ernie Banks received the Presidential 
Medal of Freedom. I was honored to see it and experience it. After being awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, we held a reception for him just in my office up here. I don't know if there's ever been so many humbled politicians coming by my office looking for an autograph. He happened to sign this one, this photo for me that day. I remember Johnny Isaacson, Georgia, a faithful Atlanta Braves fan, made a point being there to meet Ernie Banks. And I remember Harry Reid, when he met Ernie Banks, he said, I used to play a little baseball. And Ernie Banks said to him, well, Senator Reid, what position did you play? And he said, I was a catcher. And he said, if you're truly a catcher, get down in that catcher's position. Somehow or another, Harry Reid got down in that catcher's position right in my office to prove it to Ernie Banks. Ernie couldn't have been more gracious with his time signing autographs for everybody that showed up. He made time for everybody. The north side of Chicago and Wrigley Field won't be the same without Ernie. Let's play too will echo off the bricks and ivory for generations to come. His positive, hopeful, cub view of life filled every room and every baseball diamond he ever touched. And now it would seem they need to find a new roster spot on the field of dreams. And everyone better be ready for daytime doubleheaders too. Ernie Banks, your spirit, passion, and sunny outlook on life will be missed. Madam President, I yield the floor.